Hello and greetings. I'm back. Uh, well, the little break that I took uh, ended up being a bit longer th than I intended. Uh, but anyways, I'm bringing you a new game today, or rather an old game, uh, Liberation Day. It's the sequel to Fallen Haven. Um, I'm quite excited to play it again. Like, to be honest, uh, I actually played it a bunch yesterday because this video was supposed to come out yesterday. But seeing as to how old this game is, I had lots of technical difficulties even recording it. And yeah, here we are again. Um, let's just jump into it. Uh, difficulty a bit more than normal is okay. Don't want to go too hard, or do I? Early in this conflict, these semi-intelligent brutes are now pawns of the Torns and can be expected to fight to the last beast. Yep. So to fill you guys briefly in what even is happening here, um, it's uh, a space colony of uh, humanity called um, New Haven. And they've sent out uh, a probe into space to find more colonies and during um, the probe's traveling it got intercepted by the alien race called the Torrents and they tried to open it which caused it to blow up and they saw it as an act of hostility. Um, yeah, and that's why they're kind of attacking. And uh, this little base here is like the last outpost of humanity on New Haven. And uh, we will liberate all of these uh, continents. So... Oh. I didn't see them up. <laughs> um... Just to like explain how this works, um, in the beginning you saw this blue area, that was my deployment zone and I have uh, deployment points over here, which I can use to bring in more troops. Um, in the beginning you start with a bunch of deployment points which uh, refill over time but you only get very little. And. Um, I don't know, maybe you know the game XCOM, uh, it has similarities, like these uh, units here have armor rating, which is basically just their uh, health points, and they have action points, which they can use to move and shoot. Same for the towers, like for every unit in the game. And um, you can see I can move the unit around as I want. Uh, every point is 10 action points, I think. While shooting always takes up different amounts depending on the unit. Um, okay, we haven't won. Is there... Oh, there's one left. We also have Overwatch. If the unit uh, still has action points after moving and Overwatch is activated, um, it will go into Overwatch, meaning if an enemy comes in range, the unit will shoot at it uh, before the enemy has a chance to shoot themselves. Like, shoot my people themselves. <laughs> and a slight apology for this first episode because I imagine it won't be that exciting um, since I'm playing every mission there is and these first ones serve more or less as a form of tutorial. There's no, not much um, tactical playground and not much difficulty so yeah. But we will get there in time. So this is the first continent. Um, up here in the uh, left corner there's the Shublar HQ, which we will have to take. And the other um, colonies here are missions that I can take and attack the forces on there for different rewards, credits and technology points. But I can always just attack the province that is uh, next to one I already conquered, so this and this one is out of reach and this obviously as well. Building! Um, so, 
as you can, as you saw just now, I uh, can only deploy troopers, which are very bad units. But as soon as we build a few buildings, um, deploy MK1 gives us more deployment points while this uh, city is being attacked, but not in other missions. We are setting up barracks, which will allow us to uh, deploy grenadiers. Hmm. And a research center. Okay. Yeah, the mission says it's uh, good to bring LAVs, which we don't have yet. But we will attack it nonetheless because we have our grenadiers. So as you can see, I had um, like 140 deployment points. Uh, obviously, I can deploy my units only in these um, blue fields. For now, at least, there will be something useful later on. And let's go. So the Grenadier is actually uh, far superior compared to the Trooper because they can shoot grenades. Uh, and even over walls. Hmm. Yeah, he's dead. Fuck. So just to fill you in, um, depending on how difficult you set the game, uh, only two things change. The more difficult it is, um, the less deployment points you get. Um, as well as the damage of the enemy units is increased, as far as I know. But there are not uh, more enemies or anything, but it's enough, it will become a problem later on, I guess. Uh, do I need more reinforcements? Yes. Um, right, another thing... Um, uh, if you've paid attention, the Grenadiers in the beginning only um, cost 12 points, uh, 10 points. Um, the costs increase the longer you need for the mission to uh, be accomplished, so... There's that. Okay, that one's gone. Oh my god. The Marksman. This guy needs to get here. Um, so this is a tech center, by the way. As you can see, um, it says tech 250. Uh, if one of my oh no, if one of my units is standing next to the tech center while the mission ends, or when the mission ends, um, I actually get these tech points, which I can then use to further enhance my own units. This enemy grenadier is a problem. I'll just try to close in a bit and hopefully get him in the next turn. It's a bit problematic because um, the Grenadier obviously deals area of effect damage and I don't want him to accidentally blow up the tech center. If that happens I don't get any tech points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? What the hell? Why can't they shoot him? Yeah, fair enough. We got him. Now just to finish this beast wagon. And done. Okay, we got uh, new resources. Which we will use to build Spec Ops. Uh, Spec Ops. 
actually gave us the ability to deploy commandos. Um, they are immune to overwatch fire, like not immune, but overwatch fire doesn't trigger when they uh, move. But they are melee. They do you a lot of damage, however, for their um, for their range. There we go. Average damage 20 compared to the 3 of a trooper or 11 of a grenadier. And the leader troopers, which basically serve the same purpose as a trooper, but they're just better in every um, respect. And we will just dump all of our research points into the grenadier until he's maxed, following with the commando. We're also going to build a factory which will give us the ability to deploy LABs. And another deploy station. I won't get this small dock unless I have very uh, big amounts of credits to spare because the small dock only gives us um, speedboats which are weak and can't take any damage so they are quite useless, but the heliport will be up next, which will enable us to use automated units. And... We will attack this one next. Destroy the enemy minefield. Should be easy. Um, Grenadiers again. And I also want to get this tech tech center, so... I mean, we can deploy one LAV, just to get rid of some of these shoblars. So as you can see, the uh, range was drastically increased now as well. But the grenadiers are maximum level, so... to be careful now though because um, I'm not sure if there's mines here but as soon as I blow up the last mine the mission ends so I need to get my guy in there before I blow up all the mines and I'm kind of scared to do it accidentally okay reinforcements I just have to blow up the minefield, I don't need to kill the enemy units. So technically... I don't even need to fight them. There is still mines ahead. Where are they though? Um, yeah, so infantry can detect mines, uh, vehicles though cannot. If you try to move a vehicle to a place uh, where there is mines, they will just drive into it and take a lot of damage. But as I said, these are kind of tutorial missions like this was to show me the possibility uh, that there could be mines. Okay, heliport. Um, it didn't give us any new units here, but we now have automated units. Um, which I mentioned earlier, like uh, when I said that I um, will get the ability to deploy out of the blue zone, that are these um, uh, automated units. So if I, for instance, order um, automated commandos, they will be uh, maximum level, as you can see. Um, and th I can deploy them anywhere where there isn't uh, anti-air guns. However, they are quite costly. So it's you have to be very clever about them to deploy them in a situation where they can actually do a lot of harm and justify their uh, intense value. Next up is high point. 
Shubla have recovered the wreckage of the Cherokee L112, the command of our Destroy the wreckage in the Shubla junk wagon, okay. And this reason, uh, this mission is really bad without any LAVs, because LAVs have a lot of movement points and um, you have to hurry down here like this is the the um, junk wagon that we have to destroy and it will just go this way down here and into this red zone if that happens i lose so high mobility is key which uh, the lav is actually quite good at and it won't really uh, lose its value even later on Like I'm not sure if we will see it on this continent, but uh, later on we will also get buggies, which have like a small minigun mounted on them. And um, they are the second very speedy unit of the humans, but there's just no point in ever utilizing them or upgrading them for that matter, because the LAV can do everything the buggy can just fine, uh, but uh, it's a lot tankier and it deals actually more damage, I think. So there's that. Okay. Whatever. And it should have this. And he's gone. Yeah, um, so the enemy units are basically just copies of my own, at least for the most part. And you can see this uh, Footman Schubler is the same as the Trooper. Uh, you already saw the um, Pyromaniac in the last mission, a uh, second last mission, which is the Grenadier. Uh, the beast wagon we encountered um, was actually the counterpart to an LAV. However, they have this exception, the Pack Freak. Pack Freaks um, can dodge the Overwatch just like uh, I can do with my commandos. However, they have a lot more range to them and uh, their damage is not that good compared to the commando but they can still shoot you from very far away. Like If my LAV was here, he would probably be able to hit me. And yeah, he obviously is able to jet over these uh, little rivers and stuff. So pack freaks are most of the time high priority targets. But I think I'm not going that way, because I can just roadblock this and uh, finish the mission. No need to bother with him. Just get down here. You take the tech center and end turn. Oh, I forgot one up there. Yeah, look at that movement range. Remember where he was standing? Like over here? No, he's there. <laughs> And done. Um, yeah, I actually forgot to tell or rather explain to you guys um, what the research actually does. But before I do that, I um, will construct a bit more defense here. Like the watchtowers, uh, guard towers are rather bad, but. I don't care. Um, yeah, so as you can see, uh, if I was like next tackle is nine, it's currently eight, eight, obviously. If I was to spend the 60 points out of my 260, uh, it would get an upgrade to the action points. Um, if I remember correctly, the LAVs in the last mission had uh, 310. Um, the armor is, as I said earlier, just the health points basically, average damage. Um, 
there's actually no really uh, no real explanation or um, statistic as to what damage they can cause but sometimes it's a bit higher sometimes it's a bit lower average damage is seven though range is uh, self-explanatory and rate um, rof is rate of fire so if the lav let's say it was standing still on one location and um, an enemy was right next to it it doesn't have to move to shoot him it can uh, like shoot five times at maximum okay the lav is maxed out as well and I will go now you know what I'm ending this episode right here because uh, I was aiming for shorter episodes compared to my other videos uh, basically around 20 to 30 minutes which is already reached so far if, uh, if I'm not mistaken so anyways uh, thanks for watching as I said uh, um, my my apologies for these missions not being that exciting it will get better on the next continent and even better on the third one and so on um, if you still enjoyed this video uh, consider subscribing and maybe leaving a like would help me a lot and with that said see ya